Well, I'm joined now by the deputy leader of the Reform Party and soon I hope to become Tory MP, Ben Habib. Ben, thank you for joining me. We agree on so much, don't we, Ben? We well, ought to be I, every, in the same party. Everything you said, I absolutely applaud and I'm 100% behind. How could I disagree? You described the landscape that certainly I, Nigel, Richard, and uh, of course yourself, Pretty, Stuella, and a number of others in your party would wish to see. Why wouldn't we? A championing of British private sector, taking back control, ditching unnecessary regulations, cutting taxes, taking the burden off the working and middle class, getting rid of net zero, which is, I've described many times as the economic emasculation of the United Kingdom. These are all very common sense. They're not even right wing, are they, Jacob? They're just common sense. You would do this to propel the United Kingdom. We've seen what a nonsense not having borders has made of Northern Ireland, a border down the Irish Sea rather than when it should be between Northern Ireland and the Republic, um, a failure to protect our borders to the east, a, a, a lack of uh, understanding from Jeremy Hunt that if you want the economy to flourish, the private sector has to do well. And it's not that we can't afford to cut taxes, it's that we can't afford not to cut taxes. That's where we're at. So I applaud and agree with you 100%. But the problem I've got, Jacob, is that not, no matter what you say, your party doesn't do what it promises. We've heard these promises for 14 years. Boris Johnson promised a lot of it. By the way, Boris is slightly greener, perhaps, than you might like him to be. I think he's pro net zero. But leaving aside net zero for a second, you know, we were promised all of this and we've been promised it again and again and again. And I would like nothing more, by the way, than to be put out of politics by a resurgent centre-right, pro-British, pro-British people's interest party that necessitate, no longer necessitated people like me being in politics. I'm only here, frankly, because the Conservative Party hasn't been Conservative. But Ben, I don't want to put you out of politics because actually I think people like you who've been successful in business are needed in politics because you need people who are able to make systems operate and to make them work and who believe in things. And one of the things you've focused on is the unity of the United Kingdom. And we see with this dreadful judgment of the court in Northern Ireland that it is still a member of the European Union de facto. And this is absolutely, absolutely. monstrous. Absolutely. A lot of people have interpreted yesterday's judgment as if Northern Ireland courts have ruled that the protocol breaches the ECHR. That's not what the court has ruled. The no, court indeed. has ruled that it's breached European Union directives, four of them listed in the annex uh, attached to the Northern Ireland protocol. And that's what happens to a nation when it gives up on its borders. We cease to have coherency at any level. So we've now got a deportation plan, whether or not it works remains to be seen, but a deportation plan for Great Britain that doesn't apply to Northern Ireland. Well, what's going to be the result of that? Any would-be uh, deportees are going to cross the Irish Sea to Belfast, aren't they? And they're going to undermine the rule of Westminster. The whole thing is a joke. And we need to get a grip of all of this. And I'm sad to say, Jacob, it's your party that has let us down. You know, it's the Conservative Party, the Conservative and Unionist Party, that should really have got a grip of this problem much earlier. But what I'd put back to you is that it's because people of your wisdom and sagacity aren't with us and aren't keeping us on the straight and narrow, and therefore the voice of those who are um, quite left-wing is heard unduly loudly and we have been led down this primrose path to undermining the United Kingdom. Well, one of my biggest concerns in the 2019 general election, apart from the withdrawal agreement, was that I think there were at least 123 candidates I counted that were standing for the Conservative Party again for election that had voted remain, including famously, obviously, Theresa May. And I couldn't get my head around how a party that had promised to get Brexit done could return Theresa May to Parliament. You know, it was a kind of contradiction in terms uh, for me. And it sent up lots of red flags, which, you know, sadly have been proven to be right. But I would love for you to get rid of your one nation lot 
they're the problem, aren't they, Jacob? It's your one nation lot. The lot who think that the prosperity of our country is uh, founded in the prosperity of the globe. It isn't. The United Kingdom must stand for the United Kingdom and for the people of the United Kingdom. That's who elect us. That, well, we should learn from America, who whose economy continues to grow and has massively outpaced all European economies recently, uh, that thinks of America before it thinks of the rest of the world. Absolutely. Thank you, Ben. I look forward to you Thank becoming you. a good Tory or remaining a good Tory, but being in the same party as me in due course. Um, with me now is my panel, the former editor of The Sun, Kelvin McKenzie, and the PR consultant and former Labour aide, Stella Santikidu. Um, Stella, if we were to do this, Labour would have something to be worried about, wouldn't they? I'm not sure, because I think that the Conservative vote is so fragmented that even reform cannot save them. I'm not certain that the people who are turning away from the Tories are exactly the kind of voters who would go to a, a reform-style party. And that's because a lot of the voters that are leaving the Conservatives are, firstly, former Labour voters in the Red Wall. Um, secondly, people who are extremely worried about economic inequality and the cost of living crisis, and I don't think any of them are convinced that either party will help them. And third, it's older voters who, as we know, are looking for stability and they will vote for the safest choice. And the safest choice for them is boring Keir Starmer and Rachel Rivers. <laughs> well, I'm glad you said Keir Starmer's boring. Poor man. Even his own supporters think yeah. he's dull. Um, not but, dull, not dull, just very stable and secure. And boring. All right, <laughs> Kelvin. Uh, well, I... The, the, the truth about the matter is it would be a fantastic bet, right? It's a roll of the dice. And uh, Rishi Sunak comes from a deal-making background. And with deal-makers, that is what they want to do. He wants to have a success. What he certainly knows from that poll and every single poll is that Labour are going to storm home and the, and the remnants of the Conservative Party won't look anything like their position today. They will be completely done for. So what would be wrong in trying to work out, is there a way we could do a deal? Because whatever the deal is, it is going to be 10 times better than the current position, because the current position is the destruction for five years of the Conservative Party and five years of a Labour Party, which if I, I don't do this very often, if you read The Guardian tonight, Starmer and co have done a deal with the unions uh, so that the, the quotes, the workers are going to get more power. And it's that kind of stuff which we're going to get every day. So I say to Rishi, if he's watching tonight, and this is the most interesting debate I've been involved in with you, Jacob, uh, you should think about this. And by the way, it would probably mean you dumping Jeremy Hunt as Chancellor, which would be a good idea anyway. And how would the Labour Party respond if this would happen? Because the Labour Party so far has been trying to become more and more and more like the Tory party. If the Tory party actually became really properly conservative, that would be quite difficult for the Labour Party to copy us then. I think they would respond with jubilation because the further to the right the Conservatives go, the more the Labour Party just looks like the centrist, stable, secure party. So I think that if they did anything with the Reform Party, it would tarnish their image because the Reform Party, as and, you know, I don't want to put down the hard work of, the, of, of what they've done in the last few years. I think it's very difficult to start a new party. But they are not a party that looks like it's going to be government. They are not a party... Uh, that the people would be trusting, let alone the kind of voter who is a loyal Conservative Party voter would never vote for a third party. Well, as a loyal Conservative Party voter, which I suspect you're not, I would say, yes, I would be very, I would be very happy. Well, because I am happy because we can't carry on as we are. And so that... So, that, so, so Jacob's solution, fantastic. It's big thumbs up from me. Well, thank you very much, my panel.